as Willie Payne said, my neighbor across the street said, did Dan, you get the sand in your shoes here. You never leave. <laughs> yeah, and he was right. I came down uh, 40 some years ago to work with farm workers and, uh, and immigrants in a work of, I don't know, we were just trying to figure out what we needed to do, get to know the community and figure out how we should be responding to their needs. So we moved into Apopka because, you know, we, because we found a neighborhood that we could move into. We looked for an integrated neighborhood. Sanford, Apopka, forget Akoi, Winter Garden, um, Claremont, any of the kind of towns around here that were part of sort of the agricultural vortex of, you know, of all these little towns that, that worked in, you know, that sent out people to work in agriculture. So we looked for a lot of places. We looked for an integrated neighborhood. There was not one that we could find any place where people of different racial heritages or ethnicities, you know, lived together. So they were opening a new low-income housing project in South Apopka, new houses, home ownership. So, it, you know, it wasn't just, you know, projects, apartment projects or something. And there was one house left, so, you know. Apopka was the good old days. You know, 441 was the divide. All white people lived north. All people of color lived south. And um, and nobody crossed that line. There was nobody. So before we did that, we went to chest, test neighborhoods. So we went door to door knocking, saying, you know, hi, I'm Sister Ann. I'm thinking <laughs> about moving into this house. And, you know, the black community, what? hi, Sister Ann, nice to meet you. I'm Sister Willie May. I'm Sister Billie Jean. I'm Sister, you know, it's like... Yeah, the black community, everybody's a sister, like, you think you're some big deal? <laughs> so, so, you know, that was a very good thing. And so they said they thought that would be cool. Some white nuns who moved into, you know, they didn't know any Catholics. So <laughs> that would be kind of cool, some white Catholic nuns would be. And we were 20-some years old. I don't know how old we were. We were young. So the four of us moved into a house in South Apopka. We lived there for 28 years. And from there, we launched all of this. We, we, uh, our garage was our office. You didn't know whether you kind of slept in your office or worked, you know, in your bedroom. It was all kind of a mix. But we ran summer camps out of our house. We just, you know, it was crazy. So over the years, we developed a lot of different things. You know, we, we helped get a health clinic started. We helped getting a housing project started for home ownership. We helped the Farm Worker Association get started. We helped um, the Community Trust Federal Credit Union get started, a bunch of different projects. And um, so a few years ago, we decided if um, we were going to, uh, you know, endure over time, uh, we needed to kind of more formalize that and become an organization with an infrastructure in our own budget. Because mostly we, we look for support for the children that we gave birth to. So um, we changed our name from the Office for Farm Worker Ministry to the Hope Community Center because a lot of the people that are around here now don't actually work in on the farms anymore, um, but a lot of them still work in agriculture and horticultural nurseries and stuff around here. But a lot of people have transitioned over to the low end of the construction industry and the hotel, motel, back of the house, tourist industry. It's the same people, same low wages, um, same poor treatment. but. Um, a lot of the same issues, you know, like. um, economic issues, issues of uh, racial discrimination, issues of just, uh, you know, they're not invited to the table. They're not considered valuable human beings. So we fight to get, on to, you know, invited at least into the room. Um, but it's too bad that you have to fight to be invited into the room where the decisions are being made. And our object, you know, is not to have us be in the room, but to have the people who are affected for example, when all the farms closed down around Lake Apopka, none of the farm workers, who are 3,000 people who were all laid off on one day, you know, they didn't even see it coming. Nobody knew that this little sweetheart deal had been cooked up and that, the se that as this season ended, um, they would be losing the jobs that they'd worked at for 40, 50 years, some people. Low wage, you know, only ever got a raise when the minimum wage, you know, you know increased. And, um, but they didn't even, they had no idea that this was even... Even coming, nobody wanted to tell them because they wanted to make sure that everybody finished the season. You know that they finished the, the contract, they finished the you know they finished the work. Um, it seems to me, and then and there was no interest in the broader community. You know, if two engineers get laid off at Martin Marietta, <gasps> it's a crisis. This was about three thousand workers. 
the fact that they were mostly black and brown had a lot to do with the disinterest in this community. So uh, we took up the cause. We made some fights about it. A lot of those people are sick, too, because they were exposed to pesticides for 50 years, and nobody... They're very concerned about the alligators and the fish in Lake Apopka, but really not so much about the people.